Welcome to Bovington Tank Museum for the Southwest Model Show. I haven't been to this museum in a, perhaps a decade, so a fantastic excuse for me to go there. I'll take you through my journey to get there and the model show. Just use the chapters to find whatever you're looking for. Right, let's dive in. Good morning, it's time for Bovington uh, Tank Museum's uh, model show, Southwest Model Show. I'm really excited. It's a five hour drive, so it is 3.24 a.m. right now. <laughs> and I need to leave in 45 minutes. So I'm gonna get up, pretty myself up, and so I'm gonna head off to the model show on the five hour drive. <laughs> um, this is gonna be a long day. Okay, and we're off to Bovington. So I am, uh, I'm gonna get there by about nine-ish. I've just stopped to get some food because I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Five hours driving and we are here, finally. So arriving to a very busy model show and busy museum, I met some lovely people there, including Moz Models that you all probably know from the model making community on YouTube. And at the very start of the day, I had a wander around the museum and just took it all in. And I love seeing some of my favorite Italian and French tanks, stuff that you don't really see too much around the UK. But let's dive into it with the start of the model show with Bovington Volunteers Modelers. And this was right at the entrance of the museum. So as soon as you got your ticket scanned or whatever, you went straight in and saw that lovely long display. And I'm glad they get so much space. It's very normal that, um, you know, the hosts of the show get the most space. And this is definitely the case here and well deserved because this show was absolutely fantastic. Now, their display was split into relatively even sections of large dioramas and armor, aircraft, smaller armor, and then some additional, I'd say sort of miscellaneous and dioramas at the end. And there's a lot of representations from the museum themselves, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And there's some unusual subjects, such as this French sort of liberating car, which I thought was beautifully well done. And I wanted to show you it just as it is and sort of a more dynamic view as well. These collection of gliders all sat out on the grass. I think it just looked really lovely. And we see our pans are here just storming through sort of the winter terrain. There was also the British Model Flying Association here as well, something you don't see at many model shows, but I guess Wolverhampton has the space for them, right? This was really, really cool to see, particularly some of the more unusual examples there, such as the Lysander that we see here. Really cool and something that I've not had any sort of part in since I was a very small child. In the actual museum proper, we've got the lifeboats. So the model show was sort of split into a couple of different sections. This was in sort of the World War II collection itself, and this is sort of the lifeboat selection. And we also had Gatwick Aviation Club, who were also nestled nicely in here with a packed selection of tanks. I think when I arrived, they were still slightly setting up, so I apologize if I've missed anything that arrived later in the day. This beautiful example of a Hawk in an F-16 and this gorgeous large B-17, which I forgot to take a picture of the description, but I did read it. It was really cool that they built such a real subject. And there we see the Thunderbirds F-16 there as well. There's also this uh, flat uh, half track as well, which you can see is really nicely weathered. And these winter soldiers hiding behind the bushes as they reach their approach. Following on from Gatwick, then we have Models for Heroes, who are also in the same area of the museum. You can see there are several things that are available there alongside their collection, and you could also build things with Models for Heroes there as well. Fantastic organisation. Please go and check out their website if I remember to put it in the description below. I have their uh, paint uh, brush holder that they used to have. I don't know if that's still available anymore, but I use that all the time. And uh, they're just an amazing organisation, a fantastic charity. So make sure you check them out. But after Models for Heroes, we have something a bit different. This is the Southern Armour Group, and I'll just let you listen.
After we've gone through that with the Southern Armour Group, we're now into the main bulk of the model show. So we are looking at South Coast modelers here who are very ship heavy and ships are one of those things that I absolutely adore seeing at model shows because that's something I have very little interest in actually building, particularly because of how finicky and precise you have to be for them. But they did a fantastic and spectacular job putting together these vessels. There's also a couple of aircraft here, like you can see the Victor, the Valiant and the Sunderland all together there. But I just love the intricacy of these amazing ships and I also won't lie, I find it really cute, the little helicopters and people on them like... Ugh. The, the attention to detail on ships is always absolutely mind blowing. It's hard not to be taken back by the absolute talent that is display on these. This buccaneer is another example of precision work and look at how the ladders are aligned there. We have an aircraft carrier here with of course tiny little aircraft which I think is so cute. We've got um, ferry filmers and some swordfish here so yeah really really cute. This is now the great war sig and this was based off a real picture that top model there and we'll see them at the tank and the horse closer up alongside the original image as well. You're going to see a lot of tanks that you will recognise here. Some big content creators have made some of these as well. Oh, that slot with Pup is beautiful. And now, I love scenes like this because World War One was that. The last war really transitioning from sort of the old style combat to modernity. And I think dioramas like that really help show that World War One wasn't modern combat as we know it today. And yeah, I, I love the Great War sake. It really helps people remember how different World War I was, particularly to World War II, and modern conflicts that have happened ever since, and also the mass loss of life that happened as a result. But the paintwork on here is absolutely spectacular. I love the dramatic looks on everyone's faces. The, it's extremely dynamic, a, a really fantastic diorama. Congratulations on that. Now here we see the tank closer up with all its uh, rusted elements and the picture that it was originally based on. And I just thought this was spectacular, to be perfectly honest. I thought it was amazing. And uh, here we just see sort of a, for France, basically, a very sad diorama. Following on from the Great War Sig, we have Avon, and wow. <laughs> that is definitely a centerpiece to behold, isn't it? They have a lot of things on display here. Again, a really well laid out uh, table, lots of dioramas. I always love dioramas. Massive Lancaster, I'm gonna guess, is this the, 32nd scale Lancaster, which is then followed on by this medic scene, which is something really unique and unusual. Never really seen something like that before. We've got these <laughs> Star Wars snow speeders and their American markings flying over the Germans, and this rotodyne in amazing camouflage with the black nose as well. Looks really cute. Following on from this sound, we have So So Modelers, which is South Somerset, which is why they are So So. This is a really cool display. Some Warhammer on there as well. We didn't see many Warhammer um, displays actually at this show, which is uh, unusual because it's something that's ever more popular at model shows these days. But they had a really lovely selection of different model types here, including this firebombing uh, diorama, which I thought was absolutely amazing. We had some Necrons and Space Marines here. Apologies, the image wasn't the best. Uh, that was my fault. I had to <laughs> edit it quite heavily to get it looking okay. We have a Wallace and Gromit's diorama and a bow fighter loaded up and ready to go. And correct me if I'm wrong, this is the Stridsvagen 103, I think the Swedish tank going through the forest. Following on from them, then we have IPMS Salisbury. And this is a really lovely display. I love the blue in the background and the World War One fighters. It looks spectacular. We all know what's going to have caught my eye on this table. Anyone who knows me has already seen what has caught my attention. And that is the Sanco 2415, which is the uh, prototype ground attack fighter. Next to that, we do also have this Andover in the stunning desert scheme of the white. Oh, I love it, the anti reflect which are oh, beautiful. And this Spitfire diorama, which looks really lively. And also a Defiant, because I can never say no to a bolt and pull Defiant. I also adored the camouflage on this pink albatross. And just look at that. I mean, Stunning. I'm assuming it's sort of a wrap, but still looks absolutely spectacular. Right, after Salisbury then we have just for fun modelers and I loved the stuff that they fit in like bowls and cups and stuff. And I'll be honest, that was the focus of what I <laughs> did for my pictures, just because I thought they were so unique. So we've got uh, 
<laughs> Sorry. Oh, it's very, I, I love it. It brings a smile to my face. Storm in a teacup. Oh, love it so much. And then this was lost in the desert or the dessert. Hey, hey. <laughs> and this one wasn't as funny. It was just, it was a really cool scene, to be perfectly honest. But yeah, I love stuff like that that can just bring an absolute smile to your face. This is Shepton Mallet Drifters Model Club then. That's a mouthful. Couldn't say that one. I had a, had a couple of glasses of wine, I imagine. <laughs> HMS Buzzcup here in the middle. I love the camouflage on the side of it. It just looked amazing. And I took a picture of the fisherman closer up because I just thought, look how amazing this scene looks. It just looks really realistic and dynamic. Following on from then, we have Mendip. And this is a very military heavy um, display which you know, makes sense given that we're at Bovington Tank Museum. Suntown in the South Pacific here, first of all, I thought was a really unique way of displaying a tank. And then we have a Hungarian 38M Atoldi in World War II. The Vichy Shah Cannon, also in World War II. And this HS129 in sort of the desert African scheme. Let's head on over to IPMS Plymouth, who, again, such a varied scheme. I didn't focus on the tanks as much, which I probably should have done. In hindsight, I should have taken way more pictures of the tanks at the Tank Museum model show, but I have to go with my heart and what I love taking pictures of, and that is a lot of the aircraft, I'm going to be honest with you. can never say no to a Swift. Um, I just think it's a really underappreciated aircraft, for beauty-wise, anyway. We also have this Yacht Panther as well, and some, again, an aircraft carrier next to uh, a protective ship next to it. This CL-42 in, um, I'm assuming, 30-second or 40, 30 second scale, I think, actually. Oh, gorgeous, and the rigging on them was spectacular. Obviously, the CL-42 didn't have it as much, but the Gladiator did. We saw some miniature aircraft there, and then finishing up with the, uh, I think, 124th scale Spitfire just looks amazing. And we've now arrived at Four Corners, I think this was, and they were pretty much just dioramas, which I don't have a problem with because I think it looks absolutely amazing. I love dioramas because they really bring models to life and I'm glad that they're becoming more and more prevalent on the model scene. Though I don't think there's anything wrong with displaying your models in a more traditional format, just having a model on the table I think is absolutely fine. But these dioramas do sometimes take things to another level, particularly this one. You can see the desperation in trying to save that soldier in the middle. It's quite an emotional image to be perfectly honest. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad that they're becoming more and more um, prevalent in the uh, model making community. We've now headed over to Harry, as you can see here. Again, really varied display on uh, on this table. You can see the pair of mosquitoes there as well, which I think looks like absolutely fabulous together in the two different schemes there. We've got a really good mix of scales and types of um, sort of models. We've also got stuff from um, fiction as well, which is always nice to see. Things like this uh, mechanical spider, which um, please don't, please don't kill me, spider. <laughs> and there were a couple of things on this table which I don't think you'd really expect to see. So one of them in particular was um, the figure from Moon, which we'll see in a moment. Um, and then you've got that contrasted with things like this from uh, sort of Soviet troops. There's a Lancaster cockpit. And here it is to say the uh, rover from Moon, which I barely even remember that film. I had to Google it. So I was like, I know what this is. <laughs> the international markings on this Harrier as well, which I think I just, I love. I love the international markings on the Harrier and the Typhoon. And then this short uh, experimental plane that we've seen a couple of times before. And the rolling tanks, which I didn't believe for a real thing and turns out they were. There was just no surviving sort of full uh, versions of it. <laughs> We've headed over now to IPMS Portsmouth and this Nimrod is absolutely stunning. And I, I spoke to the uh, modeler behind it and they built it because their dad had flown in both the, I think it was their dad who said they flew in them, in the Nimrod and the Shackleton. Uh, it's either their dad or themselves, I'm sorry, <laughs> I can't quite remember. And I just thought this Nimrod was stunning because one, it's in a flying display um, sort of layout. You can see inside everything of it, but also it's in the older scheme. It's the Mark 1, which I think is absolutely spectacular. And obviously the Shackleton next to it, just beautiful compliments. This is now North Devon Model Society. 
and they had some really grubby cars, which I thought was nice. Uh, it's always good to see stuff that's been really heavily weathered. And also showed the other areas of modeling with some things like Airflux Quick Builds. I love seeing a Stuka out there, so I did get a picture of that. And this Lancia. Yes, guys, I actually remembered the name of the car for once. <laughs> seeing these Greek soldiers in conflict here, I thought it was really cool. And we've headed over now to Iska Model Club. Now, they had a gnat in the middle, which I think is probably one of my favorite things I've ever seen. I know one of my friends, uh, Captain VFC, if you're watching, I know you're going to love that. <laughs> Some 3D printed tanks under here as well, which I thought was a really good way of displaying what he, that, that technology has got to. And there's a lot of that at the show today. The Super Adnard of the Argentinian Navy, I thought looked really cool. And this was just a really nice way of laying out your models without doing a full diorama. This machine gunner entrenched here behind sandbags looked really, really intense. Alongside this launch site here, which was just had a really amazing sense of height. And I spotted this just as I was leaving. I turned around, I was like, I have to get a picture of that because it just looked absolutely stunning. This is the Plymouth RC Armour Club. And I didn't take any pictures of this because I didn't know if like that was a thing that people do. Um, I don't know if these are like customised or not. I probably should have asked, but I was having a bit of an anxious day, so I do apologise for that. We're now at the Romania SIG, and I think the last time we saw these was at Telford, and I don't think I've seen them at any other shows other than Telford, probably because I don't really go further south, where I'm assuming these guys are mainly based. I love seeing this SIG. Romania has some really interesting aircraft, particularly some that were designed with Yugoslavia, and some that were independent, such as the IR-80, which is a World War II era fighter, and the IR-81C, which was a fighter bomber. The MiG-21 was still in service with Romania for a while, so it's nice seeing that as well. We've got Dartmoor next to them as well, and I thought this was a really nice display again. Really nicely laid out, I love the sort of crash velvet underneath, which I know is not what most people care about, but I liked it. The Hawker Sea Fury with the really lovely um, sort of staining on the side from the exhaust looked really great. And the F-104 for Italy, I, this just looked really good. Look at the close-up and the detail on that, absolutely spectacular. This is the Royal Hussars, it's the only naming I can see on it. I really do apologise if it is another club, I do just try and take it from what's there. I really liked seeing sort of the residential stuff on the secondary table here. Um, I love that they just showed how they do make models light up, make buildings light up. And there's a lot of paper craft and card craft behind these and I think that's amazing. These are really good ways to bring particular train layouts but also for sort of normal plastic model kits bringing them to life as well. It's really, really cool to see a combination of the two and I'm really glad that display was there. Boscom Down Aviation Collection is the next club that we are looking at then and I went to their show last year, you can check out the video for that, but yeah, I love seeing their display because it just reminded me of their fantastic show and also they just do such a good job every time they have a display. Seeing the Bacara there in the RF captured markings and the Argentinian Canberra there. The South African F-86 as well I thought was so interesting, very unique subject. After that, we've got the modern British armor sig, which again, is something we did see at Telford. You can see it was quite busy there. I do try not to interrupt people as I'm uh, sort of going on. So I do apologize. Love the photo edge one though, without the paint on. Really shows why I respect armor modelers, even though I don't do armor modeling myself. So this one itself is Oldingbourne modelers. Now, they had a lot of cars there, and I did like as well that they were all modelling at the back, which I think is a great way to spend your time doing model shows, because you are sat there for quite a long time at your, your stands, obviously, so keep an eye on things. I thought it was really, really cool that they were all just doing it live there. The Bloodhound set, which has recently been announced by Airfix, is becoming back as a vintage classic, which I love seeing it here. I don't know what I'm getting now, <laughs> and all these cars here. Sadly, got the first one out of focus, but hey, the plus side is we get all the other ones in focus. This zero, which is really heavily weathered, and this tank has lost its tracking and is certainly doomed in this conflict. After that, we have big sky scale modelers. This is again diorama heavy. F117 there is gorgeous, by the way, and this P36, not P36, B36. Sorry, gosh, very different aircraft there. Scimitar, again, another really underappreciated aircraft. Really kind of ugly though, I think. <laughs> and a Ukrainian MiG-29, making us all remember what is currently going on in the world. 
this B-36, absolutely monster of an aircraft. Really brave to bring that to a show because I can't imagine how hard that must be to, you know, do it without getting it damaged. Three green models here then. I don't know if I've seen these guys ever before. It's not one that rings a bell, so this might be my first time seeing you guys. I was really impressed by a couple of things here. In particular, the airfix start sets here doing the um, synchro pair. Wow, that was really uniquely done. And the Turkish F-16, I'm assuming this is the Rebel kit for Solo Turk. Again, amazing. And this uh, sort of, I, I know I've sort of focused on the people first, that's what I think is really cool about this layout with the Patrice Suisse, the Lightning. It just, I love, I love seeing Azure layouts like that. I think it's so good. I was really impressed with this table as a whole, if you can't tell. Uh, just some really unique ideas, really, really well brought to life. This one, perhaps a more sad example. I shouldn't say brought to life so much, but you know what I mean? It's absolutely stunning. If you can't figure this one out, this is the Churchill Sig. Um, again, it was quite busy at the end there. They were very heavily engaged in conversation, which is fantastic to see at model shows. So it's not a complaint, that's an amazing thing. And I guess really this Sig is really at home at Bovington Tank Museum, isn't it? <laughs> we're now heading uh, a little bit down the road in uh, relation to local geography. This is Southampton. And I loved a couple of the dioramas here and some of the more interesting things here are the uh, T-Rex you can see at the back, the massive C5 here, which really just swamps the table. <laughs> the KT in that sort of, this diorama here, We'll see it's being filmed. I just, really, how do you think about doing these things, honestly? The uh, artillery here as well, for getting ready to fire. And this scene, my God. This, I don't know why this took my breath away so much, but it really did. The whole thing together just looks absolutely amazing. And obviously another Ukrainian thing, because modeling is really helping to remember that this conflict is ongoing and it's all really important to remember. So Portsmouth's model boat display team here. And this went all the way around a tank that was centered in the middle. And I didn't take any pictures of this. I'm not sure why. Um, I did get a close up in the aircraft carrier though. I think I just in my head, I thought I'd taken a couple more pictures, but look at that, amazing. Because it was uh, in front of this SIG, which is the God 4 SIG. And there were a couple of us around it. I'm really sorry I didn't hate pictures of them. But yes, the Golf War Sig, when we see it, a couple of that, uh, model shows that we've been to, and uh, some really unique examples here that I didn't even realise about. So we've got this, um, I think is a, it's actually a Scud launcher here, and this tornado in Iraqi markings. I had no idea they'd even evaluated it, and it was stopped because of the war. What? <laughs> and uh, the Vought A7E here with Desert Storm written on it, and the ZSU anti-aircraft tank here as well. Right then, following from the Gulf War, we're now going to something very different, which is Edinburgh Model Boat Club. I, again, know nothing about boats. Again, everyone was quite busy talking, which I thought was lovely. And I just love the busyness on all of those. Rumsey is next up. Probably not in the way you would have seen it, but this was a bit of a maze of a model show. But again, lots of dioramas, which I thought was really cool. And you can see they've got their show here on Sunday, the 16th of July. And wow, like some of the dioramas here I thought were really interesting. With this one at uh, the Oblast here with the sort of four tanks and the statue. We've got these Germans who are following on behind their Yav Panther. These World War I troops running out behind the original tank, which is just it's amazing. Uh, this one as well. Look at how the troops are just disembarking. Getting that looking so good is absolutely amazing talent. Paul Vikings then, which is IPMS Dorset here, that Rhodesian DC3 we'll see in a moment, but I think that was probably the star of this table for me. I know <laughs> probably someone's going to be mad, there should have been something else, but that's what really took my breath away out here. This Hawker Hunter at Yeovilton here, in the uh, oh, scheme looks really kind of sexy, doesn't it, the Hunter. And following on from that, we've got this F117, which seems to be on a lot of tables this year. Don't know if that's going to be a trend. We'll have to see if that's a 2023 thing. And this is the Rodeo D33 I'm on about. It just, it looks so good, doesn't it? This next table then is Con. This is right at the um, entrance or exit, depending on how you got into it. But yeah, this looks so good. And so much fun. I've seen these at a couple of shows before, so I tried to get things I haven't seen. So this Sea Harrier, I thought it looked really good. I love the old scheme for it. There's Wessex here as well. Droopy rotable aids. And this from the film Firefox. 
absolutely stunning. Looks so good. And this was on the way out. This isn't, I think, for the show. This is just in general. This is donated by Kobe, sort of the, uh, the block assembly kits. <laughs> yeah, definitely not Lego. Um, but yeah, in, they do sort of loads of military vehicles. Um, I've not got the space for them, but I just love that. And here's the shop, which is just an amazing model shop for anyone doing tank stuff. And obviously I did have a look around the museum, as I said earlier. Here's the uh, L3 that I mentioned earlier, my goofy face in front of it, which, uh, yeah, I, I love our tank. It's so silly. And the uh, Zuma here as well. Uh, it's a Mua. I can't remember say that right. I did take a couple of things from the museum. So this is a diorama in the World War One section of the museum, which really just helped demonstrate the absolute scale of World War One and how tanks were used. And it's... It, honestly amazing. I remember this from when I came to the museum as a kid, um, such a, how long ago this must have been put in place, but it's not changed too much. It's been modernised a little bit. I remember going inside one of the other tanks, and you can still go inside one in a different way, which is this one where you can just sort of see inside. I remember sitting inside one in a different way with a guide before, so I must have been on a special day when I was younger. But yeah, I, honestly, this was such a cool museum. I'm not a massive tank fan, I've said that before, but I still appreciate them. And there were a couple of sections where there was one which, um, example, was remembering victims of the war. And I just sat there and watched soldiers recount what they remembered. And it's a, I, I think the unions are so important for things like this. And also for educating people on how warfare evolved and why it's not the same as how it used to be, as it was for thousands of years. It's very different and I think this museum is absolutely fantastic. Celebrating its centenary this year, I actually bought a Cadbury's bar which has a little slip over it which is uh, to show that it's 100 years of Bovington Tank Museum and I love it. It's an astonishing museum. I really can't wait to go back again. Um, I know they have a show later on in the year but it's probably going to clash with a lot of other shows I've got on so I wanted to make sure I came to it early on this year. And uh, obviously it had a lot of vendors there. There were, you can see obviously Mr. Models there. There were other vendors as well, like models for sale who I wasn't even looking for anything this time, but I still purchased from. You know, the show was just a great place to pick up some supplies that you desperately needed and get a couple of bargains. So yeah, really incredible show. Thanks to all my channel members for help making these videos possible. Advanced Kits gets shouted out. So we've got John Alex scale modeling. We've also got Crazy Loka and explosive water. Obviously, I appreciate all of you for supporting and, well, anyone else just for watching. It really does make me smile. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I release new videos every Monday and there's a recommended video here just for you. Why not check it out and see if you enjoyed that one too? Have fun modeling. <laughs>